planned a program with a difference. We are here to celebrate the life and awe-inspiring achievements of four remarkable individuals, Ms. Simran Chawla, Ms. Deepa Kumari, Ms. Amita Arya, and Ms. Amrita Sarkar. They are living proof of the statement by the feminist author G.D. Anderson, feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. You will now hear from each of our guests about their incredible and deeply moving journey to date and will have the opportunity to ask a few questions after they have spoken. They will be introduced to us by Ms. Jeetu Cherian, an Iowa Executive Committee member, a political communications and public policy analyst with an advanced degree in international relations, who is an expert in gender studies. I will now hand over to Jitu, who will introduce us to our very special and inspirational guest speakers. Thank you, ma'am. Honorable CAG ma'am, esteemed guests, senior officers, and all the audience, and my esteemed panelists, a very good afternoon and welcome to Iowa's International Women's Day celebration. It's been an honor to be here on stage with such a diverse panel. I am the spouse of uh, Deepak Matthews, who is IITA's officer 2009 batch, and uh, it's been it's you know it's been a pleasure uh, when Ma'am suggested that we have this diverse panel because. There's this cliche that we talk about during International Women's Day and while celebrating the strengths of women, there are times that we have to honor uh, and celebrate that isn't the norm as well. So that's what the theme that we have here about pushing boundaries and crossing in, you know, the narratives because it's easy sometimes to read or to hear about countering narratives but when we are actually facing it, it's a different take altogether, and that's what I'm hoping our panelists will be able to share with you their diverse journey. Each of us has a unique journey, but you know, something that is different from the norm. And countering the narratives is what we are hoping to do over here today. So, the way that we've planned today's session is that I'll give you a brief introduction of the panelists, starting with Simran, and then we'll end with Amrita. And then they each of, um, as I introduce each guest, they'll be talking and they'll be sharing about their journey with all of you. We'll be taking questions towards after once Amrita speaks, and you know, there's a chance for each of you to interact with the panelists as well. So Simran, uh, welcome. And uh, she is a young celebrity that we have in our midst, you know, a social media celebrity, you could say. So she's a distinguished alumna of Hansraj College, where she served as president of the Enabling Unit, Society for Persons with Disabilities, a dedicated advocate for inclusivity. She was notably recognized by the Delhi Commission for Women, and a perfect example that each of us must be our own type of beautiful. Simran was crowned with Princess India in 2016-17 to by John Abraham. Simran exemplifies resilience and leadership in her diverse pursuits. With a thriving YouTube channel boasting over 7,000 subscribers, she intricately explores culinary delights and has reviewed more than 200 cafes and restaurants as dining destinations. Her relentless efforts have been honored by esteemed organizations, affirming her commitment to empowerment and advocacy for inclusivity. Simran presently works as the Head of Community Partnerships at Atypical Advantage, which is India's largest livelihood platform for individuals with disabilities. I hand over the mic to you, so yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, it's honored to be here and, you know, in, in front of all of you. I, I'm so proud to be here. So thank you so much for such a warm welcome and such a nice introduction, uh, Ms. Jitu. So, uh, talking about my life journey, it, it, it actually started um, when I was five years old. I could see earlier, but um, when I was five, I got fever and uh, um, it was like the medicine that my parents used to give me was 
not available at home at that time. And it was 3 a.m. at night and I was uh, having 103 degrees Fahrenheit fever. So they called up the doctor and the doctor said that the uh, medicine that you give to uh, my brother, that they used to give to my brother, you can give that medicine to Simran as well. And when they gave that medicine to me, I could not wake up the other day. And I kept on sleeping till 4 p.m. in the evening. And when I woke up, my mom woke me up. I, I had, you know, red marks all over my body. And when they took me to the, uh, to the doctor, someone said it was chicken pox. Someone said it was, you know, like the doctors were also not able to diagnose what it was. But it was definitely the medicine reaction. So um, when I went in the hospital, I stayed there for one month and I lost my weight and I just weighed like 15 kgs. My nails were gone, my hair fell off, my teeth fell off and my body had burning bristles. You know, it was like my body had burnt all over. But um, you know, with, with the medicines and my family support, uh, I could come out of all of those things. Now my skin is okay, those uh, blisters, those marks, everything has gone. My hair regrew, my nails came, um, teeth are also now okay, but uh, that affected my eyes and um, I lost my eyesight at that time. So, a lot of surgeries happened, my parents took me to every doctor they could and uh, not just in Delhi but in all over India and they even sent reports uh, to you know abroad, US, everywhere but the only answer we could hear from the doctors was we can just wait because what happened to my eyes was there was vision uh, in the behind but um, the structure was actually damaged because my eyes totally got dried up and now even when I cry, my tears don't come. So as fish cannot live without water, eyes cannot live without water too. So um, after a lot of surgeries, I the only difference that was there was I can now see colors. So my world is totally, uh, you know, based on colors. So I know if uh, uh, you know, someone is wearing pink or someone is wearing blue, so I can just recognize like that. Otherwise, I cannot recognize faces or anything. And you know, with my family support, um, I could join, uh, uh, you know, a school dedicated for visually impaired people. Earlier, my dad was not ready to send me there because, you know, when the, when they used to see me like that, uh, it was it was very difficult for them to accept me that now I won't be able to see and during that time because uh, it was like the world, the whole world turned dark for me and I, I used to lose my mental balance. I never, you know, let my mom go away from me. I always used to stick uh, to her and you know, it was like sometimes I was so irritated, so irritated that I used to hit, hit my head on the walls and you know, just to come out of it, I was just saying that uh, if my family won't have been there, I think I won't be here today. So a uh, big thanks to my family and to, to the whole society because when the society supports, when they understand, then only we are able to come out of it. And then uh, when I joined the school for visually impaired people, I learned Braille from there. I learned screen readers, uh, JAWS, uh, you know, voiceover and phone. So it speaks out everything, uh, whatever is written. Um, and Braille is something that we can touch and feel and read. So uh, I learned all of these things and then I was integrated to a mainstream school uh, and I did my schooling from there. My school life was not that great because you know there were a lot of uh, studies, pressure, homework, and everything. And I, uh, not just me, but my family also had to do a lot of hard work because um, when um, so in that school the teachers didn't know grade, 
and I used to write down everything on my bed, and then when I used to come back home, my mom used to, you know, um, uh, transcribe that. So she learned braille for me, and then she used to transcribe everything, whatever I had written in braille uh, with a pen, so that pe uh, so that teachers can, uh, you know, check my notebook and uh, you know uh, give the marks and everything. So this was again a challenge, but you know. Like, you know, we say that everything happens for a reason. So I passed my 12th uh, with non-medical science. That was again a challenge which, uh, you know, my school was not allowing me to take because uh, for visually impaired people, it was difficult to do science as there were a lot of diagrams and everything. So um, again, I fought with, a, with my vice principal and if I wanted to do something, I had to do it and there's no reason, uh, you know, why I cannot do it. And I scored around 93% in my 12 goals. And, uh, <laughs> then came my college and, you know, honestly speaking, by the time I came in college, I, I actually did not accept my disability till then. So I lost my eyesight in 2001, 14th May 2001. And uh, when I came in college that time also till 2015 also, I did not accept my disability. But uh, until and unless we don't accept our disability, I think we cannot move on. I always used to hide my disability whenever I used to post, uh, post any picture on Facebook or Instagram. I always used to uh, think, you know, let me just wear the sunglasses and then put it off so that people don't get to know that there is any, uh, you know, I, I have any disability or anything. But uh, when I came in college, I shared my story, you know, like how I lost my eyesight with my friends. And um, one day, one of my friends told me that there's a a story competition going on in the Women Development Center of College and that uh, in that he, she asked me to actually write my story and I was like no I cannot share my story with anyone but she insisted a lot and then I, I said oh, okay I'll just write it down but if you're posting it anywhere don't post it with my name you can put it uh, anonymous there because I don't want my parents to read it because they will then again go through the same pain that they have gone through, uh, you know, 14, 15 years back. So she said, okay, but you write it down. So the topic was um, being a girl child, uh, you know, being a girl child, how you feel and how your family is supported. So I wrote all of those things and when it went on Facebook and I saw a lot of comments there, then I got confidence, okay, that when, you know, I read a comment saying that I was going through a very bad day, but after reading your story, I feel so much motivated and I got a reason to move on. And when I read that comment, I was like, why wasn't I sharing my story to them? Why, why was I not accepting my disability? Because if you can inspire, if you can motivate even a one person, uh, you know, your, your purpose is solved. So then I, I just realized that, okay, now I can start sharing my stories. And then I participated in Princess India 2016-17, that was a beauty pageant for visually impaired girls. And as she too told that I was the, uh, I was crowned as Princess India 2016-17 by John Abraham. So that, that moment again, you know, uh, that brings in a lot of confidence and a proud moment that uh, if if you have to do something, you can do it. I mean, there's nothing in the world that can stop you from doing what you want to. So, <laughs> so uh, in Princess India also, I uh, had to do something different because there was a talent round. So I decided to dance and. Uh, since I could not see from the very childhood, from my early childhood only, I didn't know how to, you know, give expressions, how to do the steps, and a lot of choreographers even denied that we won't be able to teach you. How will we teach you? You cannot see. So that was again a demotivation, but 
um, that actually makes everything easier. Even the biggest of the problems can be solved with your one smile. And being positive is, uh, you know, uh, I would say that helps you conquer each and every challenge and just live your life to the fullest. And that's it. Thank you so much. I'm sure that you know you've some takeaways from that as well, apart from the inspiring journey that you shared. Uh, we, I'm sure that we have a lot of questions. We'll come to those later after everyone gets a chance to speak. Respected CAD man, President Iowa, guest speakers on the dais, members of Iowa, officers of CAD office, and our esteemed guests. We are celebrating the International Women's Day today, and if you think. Originally, God created equal jodis for all creatures. Somehow later along the way, the human jodi became unequal. Centuries have passed and we are still trying to restore the balance in the human jodi. Our grandmothers were denied the education they wanted. Our mothers were denied the careers they desired. However, today, our daughters can aspire for anything they want. And perhaps 20 years down the line, our granddaughters will be flying to the moon. With every passing generation, glass ceilings are being broken. And to begin with, because this is the vote of thanks, I would like to thank all the great souls who have dared to change for the better and have inspired others to do so. Our patron, Dr. Smita Mukhi, is one such great soul. Marginalized communities need a focus of all. She said to us in a meeting one day. And then, with great conviction and clarity of thought, conceptualized this landmark event down to the very fine things. A big hand for man. And on that note, I would like to convey a heartfelt thanks to her. Ma'am has wide experience in the social welfare sector, and under her visionary guidance, we are celebrating the International Women's Day 2024 in such a path-breaking manner. Such a diverse and an inclusive panel as we have seen today is a first in Iowa history and will serve as a benchmark for years to come. A big thanks to our president, Srimati Susan Vishwanathan. It is because of her dedication, energy, and involvement that this event has panned out so successfully. Big thanks to the Iowa EC members and officers and officials of the welfare unit for their dedication and hard work in organizing this event. G2 deserves special thanks for moderating this session so smoothly and so effectively. Thanks. Now to express our heartfelt gratitude to our guest speakers. Your pain and struggles have shaken us to the core and your courage and determination has filled our hearts with admiration. Dear Simran, our very own Princess India, you have such a beautiful soul, and the light coming from it has opened our Nazaria. Thanks for sharing your story with us. You have shown us that challenges are meant to be overcome with zest and passion, and that with the right attitude, we all can aspire to have a great life. Thanks a lot, Simran. 